every patriotic African should listen to Ibrahim Traore, the current president of Burkina Faso. He embodies the true Mau Mau spirit of total decolonization. He was born in 1988, just one year after the assassination of the great revolutionary Thomas Sankara. They say lightning does not strike twice, but it seems to have done exactly that in Burkina Faso, because Ibrahim Traoré could be said to be a reincarnation of Thomas Sankara. While Thomas Sankara came to power at 33 years of age, Ibrahim Traoré was 34 when he took the reins in 2022. Like Sankara before him, Ibrahim Traoré wants self-sufficiency and sovereignty for Burkina Faso, and an end to French imperialism in his country. Burkina Faso, through Traoré, has gotten a second chance at the transformation that Sankara wanted to achieve. The enemy of Africa has always been Western imperialism, as we have seen on every episode of Mau Mau Chronicles. For the Mau Mau were waging a righteous war against British imperialism in Kenya that denied Africans land, freedom, and basic human dignity. Traore represents an opportunity for Africa to stand up and take back its self-worth. This is a video of a speech by Ibrahim Traore, delivered on June 11, 2024, at the Uwaga 2000 Sports Palace in Ouagadougou. Thank you all. Hello comrades fighting for freedom, for sovereignty, and real independence, hello. Let us give thanks. Let us give thanks to God who allowed this day and exchange to take place and that we can meet in this sports palace to discuss the future of our homeland following your decision on May 25th to entrust us with the destiny of our homeland for another five years. Be part of it. We do not see this as a mandate but we understood it as a message that was passed on to us. And the message was very well received and we will do everything to always deserve your trust. Allow me also to pay a vibrant tribute to all these defense forces, these internal security forces, our valiant volunteers for the defense of the homeland and all these populations who live in these areas with high security challenges and who are standing. We pay tribute to them and we thank them for all the sacrifices made for our homeland. I ask you, I ask you that we can therefore observe a minute of silence to honor the memory of all those who lost their lives in this fight. May the souls of the deceased rest in peace and may the wounded find a good recovery. Comrades, the emotion is great indeed but allow me to articulate my remarks in three phases. The first phase will concern the stage from which I will explain to you how we see this world. The second phase we will devote ourselves to explaining to you why we must continue to fight. And after that, the most important step would be to briefly outline the vision for the future, if I may say so. Durant. 
Durant ces 20 et quelques mois. During these 20 something months spent at the head of state, we have had to meet several politicians from all over the world. We have met hundreds of diplomats from all over the world. We have been open to all these exchanges, to all these discussions in order to learn from the world, to understand the world. And today I think that the opportunity is very good for me to explain to you what conclusion we have drawn from all these meetings that we have had with politicians from all continents, diplomats from all continents. It is very important. The conclusion that we have drawn is very important and it must allow you to understand the world. Because often in our countries we do not have this perspective of being able to have access to certain people who will teach you many things through their behavior and through their words and also by telling you how they see us. Comrades, God created the world with all that there is as happiness, as unhappiness, as good, as bad, humans, geniuses, animals and everything that goes. But we humans have decided to make the world something else. The imperialists have a vision of the world that I will explain to you. The world is summed up in a triangle for them. You will see the triangle in most of their insignia. Maybe you do not understand, but the world is summed up in a triangle. For them, at the top of the triangle is the empire of good. And the empire of good is them. It is prosperity. It is everything that is positive. It is they who have the right to everything that is happiness in this world. It is they who have the right to all the riches. It is up to them to impose their way of seeing the world. It is up to them to impose their vision, their way of life. That is why during the colonization or their conquest I would say, they came to our lands and they said that they discovered our lands because for them we are savages, we have nothing like them in fact. So they called us natives and they are the people. They arrange all the rights, and for them, the world must work as they want. It is simple, I will take a few examples. Look through their movies, they have prepared the minds of their people to make them understand that they are the best. They are the ones who must own everything. You will not say otherwise. In all their movies that they propagate, you will always find the bad guys, they are either the Russians, or the South Americans, or the blacks who play the bad roles of drug traffickers, pimps, human traffickers until the recent past of course, you will find the Arabs who play the role of terrorists, this is a bit how they perceive the world. When I take the economic aspect, who among us has not treated Chinese products as products as we like to call them bad products? But today I was able to tell you that we are completely wrong because China is at a fairly advanced level of technology and it is in China that most of these countries come to supply themselves, put their brands on it and resell it to us as their properties. Look around you. Our entrepreneurs who are in the construction industry will not say otherwise. All their machines today are Chinese. Those who do the transport will not say otherwise. They lie to us because we went around the world a bit in these 20 months to look for companies, to look for factories. And we understood that everything came from there. But through their communication, they led us to hate all Chinese products, 
to want to make us understand that if what is good comes from them, not necessarily from elsewhere. It's simple. Go back in time. To better understand what I would say, we must go back in time a little. And I hope that some will read who the Tsars, the Mongol conquests, the Persian, Turkish and Ottoman empires were. Read their history, you will understand why the world is made this way. At the base of the triangle there are two empires, on one side the empire of evil according to them, and the empire of slaves on the other side. That is how they see the world. Who do they call the evil empire? Those whose origin I just mentioned right away and I told you to go back in time. Go read it. You will understand why they are the evil empire in their eyes. They fight the evil empire, and for them, the evil empire must disappear. For them, the evil empire embodies the devil. They communicate and they make their people understand it like this. This is why after the Second World War in the 80s, I will take the case of Russia. All the strategies were implemented to collapse it, with President Gorbachev. In the United States, it was President Ronald Reagan who was at the helm. Three main schemes caught our attention. So they went to Saudi Arabia and asked him to lower the price of oil from $35 to $7 to sell off the Russian economy. In parallel with that, the second scheme, don't forget something, these same people who just left Afghanistan, supposedly fighting the Taliban, the Taliban were received by President Ronald Reagan at the White House. They were armed by the CIA, the famous Stinger surface-to-air missiles were delivered to the Taliban to fight the Russians, and later, they come to fight them. Go think about it. The third ploy was a bluff, the Star Wars, or IDS project. Read it and you will understand why they got President Gorbachev to create the Paulus project that brought Russia down. Once Russia collapsed, those who claimed to be from the empire of good began to curb it until this team came with Vladimir Putin to try to bring Russia back to the surface. The evil empire, the evil empire according to them, has suffered a lot. Look at Iran today, all the possible sanctions. Look at how they describe certain peoples. Through communication, they can make you hate a people or love a people. They are very good at communication and they use all possible channels. Look at the wars that are raging. They invented everything for their own interests. And finally, the slave empire according to them is Africa and certain peoples of South America. In their minds, as I said recently, Africa belongs to them, our lands belong to them, the riches of Africa are for them and they cannot conceive that Africans can emancipate themselves, get their heads above water and therefore want to stand up to them. And for that, they have put a cliché in their heads. That the African is easy to manipulate, he is only emotion. They will always find an African to fight against his brother, and it has always been like that. Through communication, they have led you to hate your own skin color. In our cultures and in many cultures in Burkina Faso here, mourning was symbolized by the color blue. So when a woman loses her husband, she would wear blue clothes to mourn for a certain period of time. They are the ones who came to tell you that black symbolizes mourning, the devil, mediocrity, everything that is bad. 
And unfortunately, we have swallowed this so much that when we are mourning, we also put on black. We need to wake up. We need to wake up because that is the cliché that they have in their heads. They are the empire of good, others are the empire of evil and we are the empire of slaves. This is how the imperialists see the world. You have to understand this. And here, I am going to rant at certain intellectuals who continue to want to preach for the imperialists. Are they ignorant of this part of history? I am not making this up, it has been declassified. You will find everything I said in libraries or anywhere on search engines. Haven't these intellectuals read this? Don't they know the history of this world? It may be dishonesty or a few dollar bills that lead him to always preach for the imperialists. Our intellectuals must be able to preach at all times to raise awareness among our people, our popular masses so that they understand where they come from and how they are seen by the imperialists. Let's take the history of some wars. You followed the Iraq war. A big lie that was invented, supposedly about the possession of weapons of mass destruction. Some senators at the level of the United States did everything to have the proof, but they did not get it. Remember that several people resigned from the CIA after this war. Evidence was fabricated from all sides. Western secret services helped them fabricate evidence. And we remember that the same Niger was accused at the time of setting up a fake convention and a fake contract for the sale of uranium to Iraq. It is the same process that they wanted to bring the last time for supposedly that Niger sells uranium clandestinely to Iran. This is a déjà vu. They use this as a pretext, they had no proof. Even the United Nations finally found that there was no tangible proof of the presence of weapons of mass destruction. But they had their objective, they had to destroy Iraq. They destroyed Iraq. They created the Islamic State. Just like they created the Taliban in the 80s. The armies, equip them and then they pretend to come and fight them. Understand the game, it has gone on for too long. We have to wake up and understand all this and become aware of our situation and fight for our future. All these wars, all these wars were invented through Iraq, Syria, and Libya with the aim of destabilizing the world for their benefit because no one should be able to match them. This is what we are experiencing today in the Sahel also through the terrorism that they have imposed on us because they will always find blacks who will get excited and who will take up arms against their black brothers. This is what we are experiencing, and have never left this model. Unfortunately many people agree with them because of a few dollar bills. They sell themselves very cheaply to the enemy, to the imperialist and they start fighting their brothers. I wanted to make this little history of the world so that you understand how imperialism sees our world. It comes down to this little triangle. After that, in this second phase, I have to explain to you why we have to fight. A little story, in 2015 when we met in Timbuktu, I was in charge of security of the airport platform. At the airport platform, we had so many patrols. In one patrol we met individuals who were driving around. One of these individuals was one armed. I made him understand that it was dangerous to hang around the base because they could get killed. He told me that he wanted to get killed, and just wanted to die. And I tried to understand their story. Some were crazy. Others were normal, but they were looking ready to die because of terrorism. They explained to us that when the terrorists returned to Timbuktu, one of them who was explaining this to me one evening the terrorists showed up at his house. 
They wanted to rape his wife in front of him. He resisted, and they left. The next day they came to catch him at home, take him to the public square. They accused him of theft, they cut off his hand, they beat him, and he went back home. His son, who was 16 years old, who was taking care of his hand, they came back, they raped the woman, they took his son away. They continued to rape his wife for days until the woman committed suicide and they took his son away. He has not found his son and he prefers to die. That is why he walks around the base hoping one is going to shoot him, it will please him. Others have suffered the same fate. They were taken from their homes because they refused to let the terrorists touch their wives or daughters, and the next day they come and take them away, they take them to the public square. They were beaten until they were bloody and then they went to do their dirty work. Many families have been destroyed like this. They are criminals, rapists, bandits, drug traffickers who are armed and who sow desolation in our lands. They do not do it in the name of any religion. Unfortunately, here in Burkina Faso, some villages have allowed themselves to be compromised by these individuals. I speak from experience. In 2022, I went to search with my unit in a village, and they did not want us to stay there because they were in good agreement with the terrorists. Those who listen to me, they know what we're talking about. Several other units are witnesses. Some villages categorically refused to let the FDS set foot on their soil because they are in good agreement with the terrorists. We made them understand that there is no possible alliance with these criminals because they are the ones who decide the day the pact is broken. Later, I think that many villages understood this when the pact was broken, they came back on social networks to call for help, we were there. But it is to say, no matter what they will come to tell you, no matter the possible flattery, no matter the step to the pact, there is no possible alliance with the terrorists. There is no possible alliance with these criminals. They are fighting pointlessly. Today, we are seeing a phenomenon unfortunately in our cities here, where some people like to go from class to class to make the wives of some FDS and some VDP understand to the families of some people who fell for the homeland that they had a peaceful solution with the terrorists. And it is we who wanted to make war and that is why all this is happening. How can human beings seeing everything that is happening, including the world, have such remarks? Do not be mistaken. Either stand and fight them or they'll fight you, that's all. People are hiding. These people are supposedly hiding behind a semblance of dialogue or negotiation. Again, they will bring you back to dragging in the mud. This is the objective of imperialism that the scourge lasts, that it lasts over time, that your states are not structured and that we continue to profit from your wealth. The longer it lasts, the more it suits them. And unfortunately these individuals who go from course to course play into the hands of the imperialists. If they hear me, let them stop now. Because they will go and fight themselves. We have no choice but to fight and we have opted for the fight and that is how we will be free. We will be truly independent. To do this, we have taken care to diagnose the deep problem of Burkina Faso. I admit that the problem is real and deep. The evil is there. We have diagnosed it and we are discovering the system day by day. Several knots have been undone, but knots remain to be undone because every day that God makes, we discover certain practices.
I can understand that for several decades this system has been installed. It has become like a young person in our DNA. But we must therefore allocate to remove this young person from our DNA and be able to build a new Burkina. That is why in the third phase of my speech I will therefore give guidelines in certain key areas. We will not give details on our program if we can say so because when the program is known in detail they will put obstacles on our roads and prevent us from achieving our objectives. We can therefore summarize ourselves in a few words. Let us therefore talk about the field of defense and security, and as you can see, we have opted for combat. And for that, we have almost doubled the numbers in our armed forces. We continue to recruit and I think that recently recruitment has been launched on the offices and non-commissioned offices side and soon in a few days, recruitment for at least 10,000 soldiers should be launched. We will continue to strengthen the numbers to cope because wherever you are, despite the recruitment that has been done, there is always the need for soldiers. Everywhere in Burkina Faso, some villages continue to want the military presence. So there is reason to continue to recruit and equip, and I can assure you that we are on this path. Since January 2023, we have been able to launch an equipment program. It is true, the world is crazy, there is war everywhere. No nation takes its equipment and sells it, we manufacture it for you, which meant that this equipment dragged on for almost 18 months, but the first one started to come as you were able to see last time and the equipment will continue to come because we want the level of our army to reach a level never equaled in the sub-region. This program, this equipment program will continue and you are the actors of this program because since we have been fighting, I was able to tell you these so-called friends of Burkina who have been there for a long time that they are sucking our wealth, even a single cartridge of Kalashnikov, we have not received from anyone to fight our fight. You are the ones who pay. And we will continue to do well with our people to be able to lead this fight. We have partners who have agreed to sell us equipment and who have even offered to be able to deliver strategic equipment to us and that we can pay for over time. We thank them for this gesture. And we say thank you again to the people who have understood the meaning of the fight that we must fight. If we do not fight, they will come to get us at home like in a chicken coop or in a sheepfold. Every morning they will choose who they want to go and execute in the public square, to scare others, to go and cut off hands or feet in the public square to scare others. That is their tactic, therefore we will fight and we will give ourselves the means to get there. If tomorrow we are stuck in a certain momentum, we will come again to the people and ask for even more sacrifices to be able to reach the objective. Because despite your contributions, I told you earlier, certain powers have refused to sell us the equipment, have blocked the equipment that we have purchased in certain countries because they have the license for certain components. And these powers are exploiting minerals in Burkina Faso. I say it here loud and clear and solemnly that it will stop. We will withdraw exploitation permits. You cannot exploit our resources and refuse to sell us equipment, block our equipment, we will not accept that they wait, we will recover our exploitation permits and we will exploit it ourselves.
Let us return to conclude on the defense aspect. Pour conclure sur le volet donc de la défense, nous n'allons pas trop nous étaler là-dessus. We will not dwell on it too much, but know that everything that has already happened, the men are being trained on it. Other equipment will come, and we will wage this war. Many strategies have already been written, and we are adapting them as the enemy behaves. And we will defeat this terrorism very soon here in Burkina, and even in the AES. As for the areas of public service, for a long time we spent the time warning a certain number of actors, but we understood that the phenomenon is so deep. Corruption, bad governance in the various administrations, the lack of ethics persists. Some bodies have been set up as part of the fight against corruption, and recently, some orders have been made regarding whistleblower bonuses. The last act to be taken will be done before the end of this month. It is a body that will have to sit in all ministries to take charge of certain dysfunctions of acts of corruption and be able to act. Because we have many hard workers also in the administration but who are put in the shadows, who are often sidelined. Because for a long time, it is the most corrupt, the most dishonest who have been brought to light, they are the ones who benefit from all the advantages, and I therefore tell workers to be careful of these individuals who are losing their privileges because they will continue to manipulate you, to poison you and to send you to bad pastures. Pay close attention to these individuals who are losing their privilege because we are not going to allow the so-called elite who have been programmed to arrange all the rights in our various administrations. The last body will be set up before the end of this month and the real work will begin. You will hear it said everywhere after this that we do not respect certain texts. We do not respect certain laws, but there is no law or texts that hold in this fight when it is for the interest of the homeland. Let them restrain themselves to say so we are going to go in this direction. We have therefore adopted a line of conduct in the recruitment process. We are in the process of making a diagnosis, checking attendance and seeing the needs. It is not excluded that during the year some competitions will be launched to increase staff in certain places. Of course, there was first a wave of competitions that was launched but in all circles they are taking stock if there is a need. I say if there is a need, we will continue to recruit to be at an acceptable level and to be able to operate the various organs of the country for the happiness of the masses. In the areas of diplomacy, we have opted for a common diplomacy in the AES. All decisions with regard to partners, whether African or abroad, will be taken unanimously within the AES. But we have also opted for a diplomacy of truth. We do not intend to engage in certain logics of lying or covering up the reality. Supposedly, this is diplomacy. This is false. This is not diplomacy. I can tell you that what you see in the superstructure when people come to the hearing and come out to speak into the microphone, this is only the visible part of the iceberg. What happened inside behind closed doors has nothing to do with diplomacy. And so we have subscribed to this logic of telling people things clearly. Some will criticize us, others will even say that no, a head of state should not speak like that, a head of state should not do that. But we tell them that maybe these people who criticize in this way when we tell the truth, 
maybe they have a school where they learned how to be a head of state, how a head of state should be. Otherwise I have not yet seen this school. And why? Why do we have to necessarily look like others, do like others? We want to create our model, our identity. And I think that the Burkinabe by definition is the honest man. We want the truth and when the truth comes out, even if we have made mistakes, we must have the courage to come and tell you on this side we have made mistakes, we ask for forgiveness. If you forgive us, you forgive us. We no longer want to be part of this lying diplomacy. In an interview, we talked about the Ivorian regime. Some Burkinabes got on their high horse and criticized it. I say it, I insist and I persist. We have nothing against the Ivorian people, but we have something with those who run Côte d'Ivoire. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. There is indeed in Abidjan a center of operations to destabilize our country. No one can deny it and we will give you proof in the coming days. We will show you physical evidence. You will understand what we are talking about. No one will come and tell us that in Benin, there is no French base directed against us. We have the evidence at hand. Two important bases. No one can contest it and I challenge them and we have nothing against the Beninese people too. Here we have a problem with the policy of the Beninese leaders. And we say it loud and clear again. In this diplomacy we have decided to tell the truth. There are indeed two bases, one towards Kandy and the other going towards Porga or I don't know which locality. Runways have been redeveloped to over 3,000 meters long. Planes land, people equip and train the terrorists there. We have recordings on the backs of French agents in Benin there who are acting as the center of operations for the terrorists. They set up operations with them, they help them get treatment, they do everything there. We have all the details on them, and you don't want us to tell our people, we'll tell them. If you don't want him to, if they don't want him to stop behaving like that, it's simple. We didn't force anyone to become independent. If you decide to stay in your situation, but do not take your countries to make them low stop because it is your populations who will suffer afterwards. And it is not a good policy. We say it from experience and I always repeat it, that Burkina was a rear base to destabilize certain countries and it is not good. Burkina was a rear base at one point for the terrorists here. This is the price we pay. So to warn the people of these countries that I am talking about, they must speak to their leaders and they stop this policy because it does not suit them at all.